Hey, welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having a magical day. Thank you for taking the time to support the channel. My name's Hello Good Game, and I'll be your guide within today's Magic the Gathering Arena deck guide. Playing standard best of one ranked with mono green stompy. What? Are you sure? Yeah, big time sure. We're even smacking down Shieldritz. The additions that we see in the deck make a world of difference. We're going to break it down uh, in depth, discussing both the strategies and synergies before we get started in our gameplay footage, demonstrating this, you know, against the best decks as well as the players in the game. Woof. And then we'll wrap up with our final thoughts, deck review, and channel news. Okie dokie. So if you want to help support, it's really easy. Just leave a thumbs up on the video. Boom, you've done it. You can subscribe if you like uh, the video at the end of it and you're interested in seeing more as well. Until then, though, you just have to kick back, relax, and enjoy. Here we are with mono green dot 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 question mark. And uh, well, you know, that was my feelings towards this build. But uh, at the end of the day, we shouldn't, uh, you know, write anything off without first trying it for ourselves. And I'll tell you what, am I ever glad that we did. The additions are not very extensive, but uh, they're quite impactful. Feral Encounter for two mana at sorcery speed. Looking at the top five cards of your library, you may exile a creature card from among them, putting the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order, and you may cast the exiled card this turn. At the beginning of your next combat phase this turn, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power up to one target creature you don't control. This is crazy cool in the deck because A, it's uh, deal damage equal to power effect. B, it's giving you card advantage through the exile and play this turn. And uh, C, the, uh, not fight, but the damage effect uh, doesn't trigger until combat, which allows you to open up your turn with this, grab a green permanent, play that, which will trigger all of your green permanents because of the build, more on this in a second, to gain additional value before the fight goes off, um, which is really, really cool. So, you know, what do I mean by this? Before we get to that, you might already know. Let's talk about the last new card in the deck, the Gruff Triplets. For six, a three, three with Trample when it enters the battlefield. If it's not a token, create two copies of itself. And whenever one of them dies, put a number of plus one, plus one counters equal to its power on each other creature you control named Gruff Triplets. Very, very cool. Three bodies for uh, one card, and they grow, which is great. Um, and within this specific deck, they will not only grow through that death ability, excuse me, but also what I wanted to foremention earlier with the Feral's Encounter not having that damage go through until the beginning of combat. Things like the Defiler of Vigor for five, a six, six with Trample, and as an additional cost to cast a green permanent. You may pay two life. Those spells will cost one green less to cast if life is paid this way. And then whenever um, you know you cast a green permanent spell, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, right? So this allows us with the Feral Encounter, like I said, to grab another green permanent, play it on the Defiler, push up your team, and then get that uh, damage equals to uh, through or removal, which is really, really cool. We'll also be utilizing, you know, the Beast Caller in a similar manner for two mana as a 2-2. Two, two, whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on the caller. When it dies, distribute those counters among any number of creatures you control, um, which is really, really cool. Uh, is it any number? Distribute uh, X counters among any... Yep, absolutely. And also the Evolving Adaptive, um, you know, whenever you cast a creature with greater power or toughness than the Adaptives, it's going to get an oil counter, and it's power and toughness itself will be equal to the number of oil counters that you have on it when it enters it will do so with a single so that's really cool as we can uh, you know have that grow uh, every single turn which is really quite nice so that's what we have going on within the deck making sure that you get the most out of feral encounter as well as your gruff triplets uh, to surprise your opponent uh, to what they would typically maybe discard as an easy match. They're like, oh, it's a mono green match, you know, whatever. You know, I'm going to watch TV on the side. Uh, nope, not today. Uh, we're going to get you. And uh, we've got a really good win rate with this, which is fantastic. 
uh, to break down the rest of the deck for those of you who aren't familiar and might be new to this archetype uh, it is built around the auger of autumn for three mana a two three allowing you to look at the top card of your library at any time you may play lands off the top of your library as well and uh, you know as long as you have creatures with three different power the coven mechanic you can cast um, not uh, creatures off the top of your library as well uh, which is really really cool so lands and creatures off the top with the auger we are grabbing all of the land in the library with Kodama of the West Tree for three to three three with reach modified creatures you control have trample that includes the oil counters that will include the plus one plus one counters whenever a modified creature you control deals combat damage to a player search your library for a basic land card put it into the battlefield tapped then shuffle uh, and again you know this is really nice uh, we curve into it we grab two lands when it enters and then that propels us forward uh, into the deck allowing us to get the defiler out and then furthermore cast multiple permanents on top of it whether or not we use that ability because we have so much land and playing off the top of our library through the auger of autumn plus one counters everywhere trample across the board let's just get in for lethal right some other things in the deck uh you know just to get us through to the end of the day the armored scrap gorger three copies of this it's a zero three for two it gets plus three plus zero as long as it has three oil counters on it you can tap to add mana of any color and when it is tapped you can exile a card from a graveyard to accumulate an oil counter which is quite nice so a little bit of graveyard control plus ramp for us in the deck again you know it doesn't necessarily need those three oil counters to become an effective attacker because we are just distributing plus one plus one counters across the board as well the Senate pack leader for one mana, two copies of this only, just as filler as a 2-1 enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter. Uh, if you control a permanent with mana value four or greater, and whenever you cast a spell with mana value four or greater, it will also uh, grab a counter on it, which is quite nice. So um, it's there basically just to trigger everything on top of the defiler. Uh, it's there to help you curve out and just kind of fills the void because it's nice and cheap, right? Moving on, we'll have the Tribute to the World Tree for three as an enchantment, and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card if its power was three or greater. Otherwise, put two plus one plus one counters on that creature. Very, very nice, allowing us to, uh, you know, get a little bigger and, uh, you know, also make sure that we're receiving enough card advantage as we continue to play creatures. One of my favorite cards in the deck will be the Silverback Elder for five mana as a five seven. Whenever you cast a creature spell, choose one, which is multiple times this can trigger. It's, it's just doggone goofy. Just drawing artifact or enchantment, great. Looking at the top five of your library, putting a land card from among them into the battlefield, which is kind of crazy. It is tapped and then uh, you will put the rest in the bottom in a random or gain four life. So, you know, we're removing things, we're gaining life or we're ramping. It is all just so good. A single copy of Vorinclex for five as well as a six, six with reach and trample. When it enters the battlefield, grab two forests into your hand, and then we can pay eight to transform it into the Grand Evolution, milling 10 cards, then putting two creatures from among milled cards into the battlefield, distributing seven plus one plus one counters among any number of creatures we control. And then finally, until the end of turn, creatures grow, you control, gain pay one, this creature fights target creature you don't control, and then exile the evolution back into Vornclex, uh, which again will re-trigger the ETB for the two forests and so on and so forth, as we can repay that eight to flip it back to the enchantment, which is pretty doggone groovy. There is a Who Endures and 23 basics in the deck to finish it off with the Tyvar Stand for one mana plus X at instant speed, giving us indestructible and hexproof until the end of turn, as well as plus X plus X. This is a great mana sink because we're going to have trample. We're going to have like 15 mana and um you know maybe our opponent doesn't have anything maybe we don't have lethal if we don't need the protection and this will give us lethal um maybe a little earlier than we typically could have taken it uh as well which is quite nice so that is the deck list in its entirety i hope you guys enjoy the additions of feral encounter which i honestly love we are taking out shoulders left and right with this bad boy as well as the triplets which is actually not the worst it's pretty cool um, very aggressive i just wish that one of them had haste at least like one like the main one the tokens don't need haste but the main one should have haste sad but it is what it is and i still quite enjoy it make sure to like comment subscribe kick back relax enjoy today's gameplay footage and then we'll be back after that to wrap up let's go all right we're gonna go first let's keep seven
And, uh, you know, we're out a little slow, no one drop. It is what it is, right? I mean, Gorger out and we can double beast. Jetmir, Naya humans in the house. Let's go. Second, we'll push up the first. We don't have a card to grab, so no oil counter with the Gorger. Hello. Guard game. Please don't play turn three Thalia. I was just thinking to myself here, is Godric human? Godric's uh, a very good card that we've seen. And I, I think it must be a human. It's a bro looking uh, character. I think Godric's a human. That sometimes it comes a dragon. Man, that's brutal. What do you do though? Okay, okay. So it's important that we keep casting. And I guess this is just our best option. Let's grab a counter, nothing to exile still. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's get that damage in. Four mana. Ay, ay, ay. Muriel. This is the anti. I can't tell because the art. You're actually going to make me read the card. This is the anti poison card? Yes. Okay. Nice art. Like, just attacks my senses. <laughs> okay. So, adaptive first. Pack leader on two to push the adaptive. I mean, let's just start stacking life, I guess, or thinning the library. Thinning the library is not bad. And I think we just keep doing that. My deck's going on a diet. Hey, Tuesdays. Meow. Well, guest appearance today's video. Uh, this is our third land of the turn. Adaptive goes up again. Oh, yeah. Hit for six. Hit for five as well, I think. And just, you know, force them to block. Maybe not this turn. Probably next turn if they don't do it this turn, though. At a certain point, you know, they will be forced or die. Or lose, I guess, is maybe more appropriate. I've been getting flagged on YouTube for the strangest things. Like, I gotta tune up that language. All right, uh, we will get one land. We're going to get our Beast Caller back. Oh, no, Indestructible incoming. They sacrifice this into exile. And um, we get our Bro back, but their Cathar gets to re-enter. And I assume they grab the Silver back at this point. We're going to get our third or fourth land there. Fifth land? Because we played one on our upkeep? I don't even know. It's a lot, though, right? And there's a good chance because of that, we're not going to draw another. I mean, it's arena, so of course, we will probably like three or four in a row. <laughs> but we should be okay. Thinking, please don't sunfall me. Right? We have a pretty sturdy field. I think we're okay.
Adeline is good. Intrepid is also good. They're like, okay, I'm gonna, I need, I need the, the life gain blocker here. Well, you are also good. <laughs> it's gonna trigger both beast callers, as well as the evolving adaptive. And we get in with the crew. Um, I think we could force blocks like this. They have the life gain up to 15, keep in mind. So no. Let's just be conservative. We'll get it next turn, you know? Again, forcing them to block eventually. Doesn't have to be here. Well, actually, no, it does. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, they go up to 15. They're taking 11. Still plenty of blocks. To one, we get three lands. I don't think there's gonna be any land in our library. Nissa would go really good here. Generate more mana. I don't know what we'd use it on, but I guess we could play with bigger spells. Simba. No cats. No cats on the laptops. It's like fine. I don't even want to be here then. <laughs> That's an eight seven. That's pretty cool. I like it. I think Trample is the winner here, though. A good game to use. Going first, looking for our third, fourth, and fifth land. <laughs> what could go wrong, right? We'll be okay. We will be okay. Here's the third land off the top. Fourth land incoming as well. Hit for 2 to 18. I'm so nervous against the mono red decks, right? They're so good. Okay, no removal. Nice. We do get hit for two and three on the turn, I suppose. No attack. Get the fourth land. I'll allow it. Let's push up the beast caller. Adaptive stays the same, and their swift spear is playing defensively. No attacks. Okay, we just need our fifth land. This silverback will dominate them. If we get this silverback out, I think we win. Four life every creature we play, and it's a 5-7? Get out of here. And uh, in the interim, we're surviving. We just want to survive, homie. It's a lot of booties. If they happen to have a mechanized warfare, that's worrisome. Mm, it's not the land we need. It's not the land we need. Oh, Squee is good. We're at 18. Come on, just give me a land, homie. <sighs> Come on, man. I didn't know that. Just playing defensively. You can do it, HGG. Fifth land off the top. Oh, wow. Look at that field. It's so good. Oh, my gosh. They won't stop. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
Hey, uh, that's a monkey. They have to kamikaze attack or scoop up. <laughs> Not today, Mono Red. Our opponent's going to open up the match for us. I appreciate that. Thanks. It's like when, you know, you're at the bar and you know, you're going to play pool with someone and uh, they're like, oh, let me go get a drink first. I'm, br I'm breaking. I'll, but be, I'll be right back also. And then they're like standing in line at the jukebox, you know. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Let's go, dude. <laughs> Turn one adaptive. Turn two beast caller. I do not like enchantment decks. Do they have an ossification immediately? Dang it, I certainly hope not. I'll trade, even though they can bring theirs back. I'm open to a trade. No problem there. Thank you. They have life gain as well, so, you know, uh, the damage we do doesn't really matter so much. I mean, it does, but it's like, I wouldn't count on it, right? Oh! And then an ossification for just a big old LOL. Oh, a companion. Okay. Usually we get burned if we have protection and don't hold it up. All right, let's push off the beast collar. Push it up again, homie. Looking for our fourth and fifth land still. No attack, we're defending. We have the advantage with a double block when they declare um, blocking order. Right, we can just protect the one that they're attacking first. Do I play Calyx and then Ossification? Yeah, Calyx for two, Ossification for one, and I keep crying myself to sleep. <laughs> Ooh, double Ossification? Main phase Virtue for the draw, even though it triggers on you know, they could have flashed that for the draw also. And they played a land this turn. Yeah, so I don't know why the main phase, but the welcome will also trigger. That is the opposite of a land. She's a bricked deck. No landy landy. Draw spells all day long. <laughs> That's a good one. That's an original remix from your boy. Your boy's also got to get a haircut. Look at these locks. I get curly hair when it gets long. I wish I had my fifth land. Go, go, gadget. Fourth land. Hey, maybe, though. It's going to push up the adaptive as well. And we get the land. And we get the land. Uh, Vorclex is not a land, though. But we draw it. Could be land underneath it. <sighs> no attacks. If I had to land, maybe we attack um, to use a stand offensively and then again defensively. But risky biskers. I wonder what they have planned for us. Four cards left in hand. 
Mmm. It's cool that the naturalist gives a reduction on that. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> hey, you just, you got to stop it, homie. It's not looking good. We need a gorilla to go ape on the enchantments. But first, I'll land underneath Vorinclex after our, I can't believe they're not attacking. This is wild. Oh, I get, I understand why. I mean, they're going to, they got clear advantage there. Land off the bottom. Boom. You can go Vorinclex first. Triggers the pack leaders, triggers the beast caller, triggers the evolving adaptive. Clears the tree off the top by grabbing two lands. I'm sure there's a shuffle afterwards, right? And the two lands confirm our gruff next turn. Ah, no attack, sir. No protection here. They'll probably go for Vorinclex. I have a single who endures, which would take the virtue, I think. That's hard. Wow. Go Defiler, push up the crew. It's only the Virtue and the Draw Engine, like the plus one counters and the Draw that are the problem. We could beat the Virtue, I think, with the Defiler, so we should take the Draw Engine if we get the chance, right? <laughs> and then we can't cast this off the top though can we will it allow it it will we need the monkey right where's our monkey we need the life gain we need the enchantment removal Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, pushing up the crew. Oh, okay. No attacks yet. We're close. We're close. Once we play Kodama, we're going to be good to go getting trample on our remaining creatures. Oh no. Please don't have it. To our worst nightmares, them copying ossification, right? We'd have to block and not let any combat damage through now that Calyx is out. Get he, gets, he gets nervous. He does the hoodie up. You know, he's going to... Ah! <laughs> have to hide, become safe and protected. Land off the top. Oh, that is nice. We have seven. So three, four, five, six, seven. Defile city. We could just attack and use the stand to win, I believe.
Could we not? I don't want to cast this. I want to keep up. The stand. We could have done it, but I think we should... Uh... I didn't do the Beast Caller first because I was going to cast the triplets. And then after contemplating it, I said, no, I'm actually going to keep up the stand. Uh, which should have taken place before I spazzed Kodama in place but you know sometimes it's okay to change your mind sometimes right i decided that i do want protection i think that's quite smart and i think we have lethal here do we not there's literally no way we don't have lethal yes the math hurts me too. They do need six life to 21. But we're hitting for so much. Like there's no way that's not. I do see the 11 at 11 that's bigger than us though, right? We only have two clean attacks, 66 in, and they're blocking for, oh, 19, 25, 29, 36, 39, plus their 21, which is like 50 something. So it's probably lethal. But I held up protection for a reason. I want to protect. <laughs> I don't want to attack until it's 100 points of damage, okay? This is going to be a great card here. Let's defile that for sure. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Ew. My bad, homie. I just like the removal. Push the team up. I guess we could pay more life, but it doesn't matter. And then indestructible if they're going to interact with anything. Right? They have two spells. I doubt they're both interaction. And this should be way more than enough, right? Like, this is obsessive. Um, by Tybar, right? Or Calyx? Why did I say Tybar? Because it's in your hand. That's a Calyx, not a Tybar. For those interested. <laughs> What you got, Willis? Okay. Not indestructible, though. Just a big hit. 
Hola. Oh, no. Poor guy. Poor guy. Great game. Keeping seven, going first, looking for our third land. Fourth would be nice too, but... Something about beggars and choosers. Turn one is really cool. I like this. Typically, I would go Beast Caller on two, Gorger on three to get the most out of the adaptive. But if we don't get the third land, then it has to be the Scrap Gorger, right? It's the land. Hmm. Okay. So if we go Beast Caller on two, Kodama on three, that's a double land draw. And we like it. They probably removed the Beast Caller here, but, you know, maybe not. Maybe they don't. Maybe they just play a 2-2 two, two and attack. Oh, no, it's gone. It's gone. It's not gone? Bro. They could bargain Kumano to kill Kodama with that new removal, but we get double land here. That is groovy. Say hello to my triplets. B E A beautiful. I always get so nervous playing against Mono Red. Kodama grabs the counters. Oh no, it goes to exile from Kumano. That's very good. No counters distributed. We still just slam out, though, right? It is what it is. It is what it is, homie. Double attack for six, and it's a race. We have nice bodies. Let the booties hit the floor. Seven land. We have the encounter, which is really nice because we have so much ramp that we can easily cast it and, you know, play what we draw off the top. Flame breather. Not a bad card. Resolve is going to tap them out for the turn, and, well, I truly appreciate it. Where are you going? Bye! Going first, sure, but it's pretty slow. We need a Beast Caller or a Scrap Gorger off the top. I'll play defensively. Oh, not mono red. Bro, you're so cool. You just became cooler than every mono red deck I've seen today. <laughs> That's a curveball. Looking for number four. Uh, sorry, number five. We have number four. Cycling the blood, tossing a land, playing a land, untapped. Do it, Bran. They might have... No, they don't. Okay. I wanted to leave that one mana open just to kind of fake it. And we get lucky grabbing our fifth land with the evolving adaptive, maybe. Yes. Okay, okay. And, uh, well, we all know what time it is. Ooh, shoulder time, HGG. Turn four. <laughs> yeah. So often is. We can get it, though. We can get it. If we get lucky, we can get it. As long as they don't have removal. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. So far, so good. Double draw. That's like... 
fix life on the turn. Like play a land. No way. Okay. 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 We're we're okay. It's a good drain deck. The auger for sure, right? I don't want to lose. Well, I mean, we're killing Shouldered. Or just slow roll it. Just slow roll it. I don't want to lose too much life. Get blasted! And I think, I think we're going to play a little catch up here. I don't want to play slow. We're down to 10. You're at 28. Let's go. You know, triple land. <laughs> I should, that'll make next turn manageable for you. More removal. Beautiful. And it's this encounter. I, I kind of like it. Oh. Oh, you're drawing again. Oh, you're such a dog, dude. Woof. We should just go for the kill. And I think we have it, do we not? Play this for four. Down to four. Push up. Land off the top, cool. And then one of these is in normal. Still triggers the crew. This can't block. They have six, seven, eight. Oh, we can't do this. Whenever one or more other creatures you control dies, we cannot pay for that. Huh. At least we caught it. At least we caught it, homies. They can block three, out of which gives them 24. We're hitting for 15. Oh, yeah, that's like 30 damage. Trample, you just can't beat it. B-E-A, beautiful. We get the job done. And uh, that was a close one. Right, we almost lost. We we're gonna pay Phyrexian life for that last card to push up even further, and that would have given them the win with Fran. Right, so it's a good thing that we didn't. Oh my gosh, mono green! What? <laughs> I don't believe it. Uh, we're actually ranking up with it. I don't know if it's actually a good deck right now in the meta or it's just that people have just discounted it beyond belief that you know they've written it off they're they don't care they're not paying attention they're misplaying on purpose uh they're you know they're letting the kid play they're like hey hey billy you know this one you can reel this one in right it's only a mono green deck <laughs> no i don't think so i would like to run four feral encounters i think because it was such a high performer in the build um you know, using it in conjunction with this specific build is amazing. Like, I feel like it was printed just for the rest of this build. It's 
great because of the way that it, you know, it's it's used most effectively late game because it costs two and then you want to play, you know, a three to five drop with the card you grabbed into exile, which is normally not great. That's not a blizzard brawl on one you're casting on two or three, right? But the fact that we're ramping so aggressively within the deck makes it so much more viable, right? Plus it's generating, you know, the card advantage, you're removing shouldered. Um, I'm I'm game, you know, if you can tell me why this card is bad in the comments below, I, I'll consider it, you know, because I'm looking for a reason and I can't figure it out. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, become a YouTube member, join the community Discord. Most importantly, have an absolute magical day. I appreciate each and every one of you, truly, and uh, I hope to see you soon in the next.